after day Alone on a hill The man with the foolish grin You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open the phones up for Dan Dix for the rest of the hour dealing with Mexico being collapsed by design, the establishment five years ago launching a war against cartels they didn't control, knowing it would destabilize the country. The SPP documents show they wanted to use border crises to do this. Uh, it all ties together. And the magnitude of this corrupt offshore group of banks that have taken over the planet's finances through fraud, doing this by stealth is so outrageous. And if we can just expose it, it will implode. The film is United We Fall. It's available at prisonplanet.tv for members in high quality. Or I suggest you support the filmmakers and us. Our, our operation by the DVD, United We Fall, 1995. You can get a second copy, and when you buy a second copy of it to give family or friends, you get three films for free. Fabled Enemies, Exposing 9-11, excellent film. How Weed Won the West, Exposing the Phony Drug War and Government Drug Dealing, and American Dictators. Three films for free. We're running this special for two weeks. When you buy two copies of United We Fall, you get three Films free. We have another special going. In fact, I'll show listeners this right now and then go back to our guest. And I'm only running this for two weeks. You know, we've been doing specials every two weeks. Terror Storm, How We'd Won the West, Fabled Enemies, Reflections and Warnings with Aaron Russo, and American Dictators. Five films, nine ninety five. Hard cover, color cover, full length films with extras. Even if you don't watch these and think you know it all, give them to people. Nine ninety five. that's less than $2 a piece. People are going crazy over that special. Infowars.com. But the toll-free number to call in and talk to Dan Dix about the G20, about globalism, about what the North American Union means, how we can fight it, 1-800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. Going back to Dan Dix, this is a short segment, long segment coming up, but uh, I mean, from their own documents, from interviewing and from what you cover in the film, people go, well, it's part of you know Star Trek that we're going to have one government. They've kind of preconditioned us with, uh, with these fables, self-fulfilling prophecies, predictive programming, uh, that this is a foregone conclusion. But this isn't a happy, lovey, utopian world government. This is a global corporate dictatorship that wants eugenics as their end game. Yeah, well, Alex, one of my favorite scenes in the film is when we ask Robert Pastor his opinion on the idea that this North American Union could be leading towards a global governing body. And he looks at us and says, uh, you mean one world government? And we say, yeah, yeah, what do you think about that? And just to watch him uh, sit there and, and just stare at the camera and blink, and you could see the thought just going through his head. He had to choose his words very, very carefully. He didn't really know how to answer the question. And like a professional politician, he eventually kind of answered the question without actually answering the question, as they often do. Uh, but you could see that he was, uh, you know, stuck there at the time I was operating the B camera. And I just, you know, I couldn't help but have a smile on my face. I was like, wow, this says a lot about this guy right now. Yeah, what did he do? He paused for about four or five seconds and was blinking literally like a deer in the headlights. He was literally like a deer in the headlights. He, I think he was a little bit shocked that we would ask him such a question uh, on camera. And I think it was a little bit more than four or five seconds. He sat there and just did not know what to say. And, um, you know, that's one of my favorite scenes in the film. Well, I, I mean, as I was saying, you've knocked it out of the park. you got interviews with Vicente Fox. I mean, uh, where he admitted it's world government. Then he went on Larry King Live and said, yes, it is going to lead to a one world government. It is going to lead to a North American Union. And, and you did get some of the globalists to admit in the film that they do want world government. Uh, yeah, some of them were open about uh, speaking about it. Um, they, they wouldn't use those terms, uh, but they would certainly say that, um, you know, uh, unity is, is what we need. Um, like, for instance, Paul Martin. Uh, well, we asked them all about their, their concept of sovereignty as well. And each, each one of them uh, said that, you know, sovereignty has to, you know, we have to rethink the concept of sovereignty. Uh, John Manley sat there and said, I find it amusing uh, people who put sovereignty in this crystal jar as if it's the be all and end all. Um, so they kind of laugh off the concept of sovereignty. And Robert Pastor even went as far to say that people like myself and you are the problem. 
we are slowing down uh, progress and uh, that we are in fear of uh, change, which, of course, is not the case whatsoever. No, no, uh, they have a stealth, secretive, forced global government that its open goal is to, quote, it, destroy industrialized society. That's Club of Rome UN. And so this is a corporate stealth takeover. And then they Absolutely. bring in the, the, the paramilitary police to suppress you after they've gotten corporate control. Stay there. You've also got not just the YouTube footage, but the actual crisp original footage of police dressed up like anarchists attacking their own officers. We're going to play the trailer for the incredible documentary film United We Fall and then get into the provocateurs in your phone calls. You'll notice that when I start talking about the North American Union, I start talking faster and faster I start stammering it's one of the few subjects that at just a primitive level I get angry about because I've read the UN documents the CFR documents watched the C-SPAN press conferences where they admit it all uh, you know read their reports uh, read all the stuff that Judicial Watch sued to get the fact that they could keep it secret treaties they've signed and then we get the treaties, and it says in the first line of the meeting, we've got to keep this secret. We've got to have integration by stealth. And to know this is their plan, and then some of them don't care, like Vicente Fox. He's like, yes, we're integrating, North American Union. And, and other globalists admit it. And then to have them go on the news and make fun of us, even make fun of Lou Dobbs, ran him out of his highly rated job. His house got shot up because he's reporting the truth. And to read in the SPP where they said we'll use crises, economic, flu, biological, uh, you know, huge flows of migrants to know the UN on record in the last 30 years ran the indigenous populations off their land all over Central and South America, but also in Mexico, forcing them up here, then using them as a weapon to drive down wages, the giant sucking sound that Ross Perot talked about. This is treason. Obama becoming the first head of the U.N. Security Council as a sitting president. It's treason. Let me read you the subsection. Article 1, Section 9 of the U.S. Constitution. By seating himself at the head of the United Nations Security Council, thus becoming the first U.S. president to chair the world body. And when he was there, they had Kissinger and all these other globalists, George Soltz, and Obama was thanking them, and they were in rapture at the precedent they were setting. See, they're building a global government where they write the rules, where they're immune from taxes, regulations. But they write the regulations on you, and your government takes that money and pays it to them. That's why when I saw the new film, trying to find it here in my stack, United We Fall, just a few weeks ago before we posted it on PrisonPlanet.tv, I was like, everybody has got to see this film. Now, let me ask you, Dan, and... and if you're not for it, that's fine. I should have asked you off air, but I'll just ask it here on air. You may have to ask your, your partner. I know you gave it to us to post on PrisonPlanet.tv graciously because you wanted uh, our members to see it. Uh, where do you guys stand on people uh, not selling it because you need to keep your copyright? We've discovered that ourselves because if you just say do whatever you want, people then try to take it away from you. But where do you stand on viewing parties? Are people making copies to give their friends and family? Where do you stand on that? Because United We Fall needs to be a big hit. Uh, we absolutely fully encourage that, Alex. We would, in fact, ask people to do just that. Uh, burn copies of it in high quality and give them out to your friends, uh, family members, total strangers. Um, that is absolutely key to getting this information out there because awareness is key at this time. Uh, so when you do get the DVD, um, you not only get the film, but we went all out on this DVD, Alex. We have over two uh, hours of extras. Uh, we have deleted scenes. We have a lot of special features, stuff we just simply couldn't put in the film. A lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, we have a behind-the-music featurette. I wrote and played all the music and all the sounds that you hear in the film. So we made a, Brian made a little special feature on that. We also did a director-producer uh, commentary. Um, so when you get the DVD, you, you also get a lot of extra stuff. And then, of course, we fully, fully encourage people to make copies, hand them out uh, for free, because getting this information out there is absolutely key at this point. Well, that's the mark of a true patriot. Uh, and we just salute you and your multi-talented uh, gifts that you have bringing together this film, United We Fall, Three Nations, Two Sides, One Union, a first-rate 
bombshell weapon against the enemy. You can download it, burn copies at prisonplanet.tv, get the DVD at infowars.com, get it, get it out to everyone. We have it discounted. When you buy two copies, you get three of my films free, infowars.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. Now, I want to play the three-minute trailer on air for the radio and TV viewers today, uh, Dan, but I also want to have time to get to some calls. But briefly, you also in the film have the video in full living color of citizens catching police provocateuring, and since then they've been caught in other cities in the U.S. and in Europe red-handed, another form of false flag terror to frame uh, people that try to protest so they have a pretext to then snatch and grab citizens and, and, and bring in private contractors like we saw at the G20 a few months ago in Toronto. Absolutely, Alex. This is becoming their modus operandi uh, when they want to shut down a legitimate protest. Uh, a lot of the times they will provide the excuse to do so. And just like we saw in Montebello, Quebec back in 2007, uh, I was there and uh, we documented uh, in my previous film, The Nation's Deathbed, uh, where you do see three undercover police officers who are dressed looking kind of like the black block, uh, you know, wearing the black, wearing the bandanas, and they had rocks in their hands in an attempt to incite violence. Uh, the Quebec police did, in fact, admit to it and said, yes, these are uh, our officers, and they were simply performing their duties. Um, so they are admitting that this is a, a common tactic uh, that they are using. So now, uh, just recently with the G8 and the G20 coming to Toronto, there are a lot of very, very, very questionable things uh, that happen there, and we are actually working on a new film uh, about the police and about what took place here in Toronto. Uh, we are uh, doing a lot of interviews. We have captured a lot of footage from that event, and we want to get to the bottom of uh, what happened here because it was an absolute travesty, I'm sure. A lot of people may have seen some YouTube videos or seen clips on the news of what happened here. Uh, so we are currently working very hard on a new film uh, to get that information out there as well, Alex. And notice it was the same thing that we saw in Pittsburgh. People in police uniforms, people in military uniforms, people in plain clothes, pulling up, grabbing citizens for no reason, throwing them in unmarked cars. Same thing happened in Toronto. This is a global management, and they always do it in front of news cameras to send the message, hey, we snatch and grab, and they snatch and grabbed Rob Dew and took him to a military facility where hundreds of other people were getting off trucks with bags on their heads like they were Al-Qaeda. Yeah, absolutely. It's going on all over the place. Of course, uh, as you know, Charlie Veach was uh, here in Toronto helping me cover it, and they snatched him up right away. Um, he, you know, his first day here, he ended up spending 21 hours uh, in uh, the holding facility and just went through a horrendous ordeal there. Um, and uh, th there's certainly an attack on uh, this information because they know it is key. Uh, they know we are having an effect. And um, they're trying to shut it down at, uh, at every step of the way. And he was out there being absurd, you know, saying uh, all sorts of absurd things and saying, yes, I'm a secret police officer with the Love Police. And last time I heard they charged him with impersonating an officer when it's clearly a joke. Uh, where has that gone? Uh